welcome to FizQuest. So this is the solution video for CSIR NET December 2019 part C question number 20. The question is the generator of the infinitesimal canonical transformation that is Q goes to Q prime which is equal to 1 plus epsilon Q and P going to P prime which is equal to 1 minus epsilon P is we need to find out the generating function for that transformation. So let's get started. So this question comes from the section classical mechanics and the concept involved here is canonical transformation. So what is canonical transformation? So to describe the equation of motion of any system be it simple or complicated, Hamiltonian mechanics is a powerful tool. Hamiltonian is a function of position and momentum. Sometimes to solve the equation of motion in a convenient manner, it becomes necessary to transform the coordinates to another form. For example, you can consider the motion of a pendulum where instead of the Cartesian coordinates x, y, if we use the plane polar coordinates r and theta, it would be easier to address the problem. But here the condition is that for canonic in case of canonical transformation, the Hamiltonian form by new set of variables must satisfy the same set of or same preserve the same form of Hamilton's equation. Now the transformation from one set of variable to another set of variable is done through a set of relationship or a set of function which is called generating function. Now depending on which type of old variable is transforming to which type of new variable there are four set of generating function and for them there are four set of relationship which transforms them. Now the question here talks about the infinitesimal canonical transformation. So what is infinitesimal canonical transformation? The transformation in which the new set of variable differ from the old set of variable by an infinitesimal value is called an infinitesimal canonical transformation. So suppose if new variable q and p differ from old variable small q and small p by infinitesimal value, here delta q and delta p are the infinitesimal value by which the new set of coordinates differ from the old set of coordinates. So now if you want to write down the generating function for the infinitesimal canonical transformation it will be uh, the generating function it will be a combination of generating function of an identity transformation along with a function generating an infinitesimal value now out of all the generating function uh, we have discussed in the previous slide f2 is the generating function which generates the identity transformation. So the generating function of infinitesimal canonical transformation can be written as f2 is equal to qp plus epsilon gqp. So here f2 which is a function of q and uh, p that is q and capital P is written as a sum of identity transformation which is the first term and the function generating an infinitesimal value where epsilon is the infinitesimal parameter and g is the generating function which generates an infinitesimal transformation. So here if we use the uh, equation for the generating function f2 that is p is equal small p is equal to del f2 by del q this will be and capital q is equal to del f2 by del capital p 
So, if we use these two equation which correspond to the, the generating function f2 and we use this in this expression this will be equal to small p will be equal to capital P plus epsilon del g by del q and capital Q will be equal to small q plus epsilon del g by del p. From this we can write that capital P minus small p which is equal to delta p. This will be equal to minus epsilon del g by del q. Similarly from the second expression capital Q minus small q which is equal to delta q will be equal to epsilon del g by del p. So now in our question we are all this is the expression we have got in this general formula. Now coming back to the question we are given q prime is equal to 1 plus epsilon into q. q prime is the new set of coordinates. Uh, uh, sim new set of position coordinates. Similarly, p prime is equal to 1 minus epsilon p. Now, if we expand it, it will be equal to q prime will be equal to q plus epsilon q. Similarly, p prime will be equal to p minus epsilon p. So, from this expression, uh, we can write that q prime minus q will be equal to epsilon q and p prime minus uh, p will be equal to minus epsilon p. So, therefore, q prime minus q is obviously delta q. So, delta q is equal to epsilon q. Similarly, here p prime minus p is delta p which is equal to minus epsilon p. So, we have got this value of delta q and delta p from our given question whatever expression is given in the question and we have a set of general expression as well. So, if we compare them so, let us first compare the position part. So, when we compare the position part delta q in uh, general expression and the expression given in uh, we have arrived as per the question we have got epsilon q is equal to epsilon del g by del p. Similarly, if we compare the momentum part it will lead to delta epsilon minus epsilon p is equal to minus epsilon del g by del q. So, uh, the first the position part leads to the expression q is equal to del g by del p. Similarly, the momentum part leads to the expression p is equal to del g by del q. So, we have got two relationship that is q is equal to del g by del p and p is equal to del g by del q. Our purpose is to find out g that is the generating function which generates the infinitesimal transformation or the infinitesimal value. So, from both the relationship if we compare if we eval try to evaluate this situation is only possible when g is equal to q p. So, g equal to q p is the correct expression for the generating function for infinitesimal canonical transformation given in the question. Now, let us check the um, option. So, you can see that as per all the expression option b is matching with our result. So, the correct answer for this question is option b. Thank you.